This is Tom Fox, and I would like to welcome you to Readings and Felicitations. In this podcast series, I'm going to be visiting with thought leaders, entrepreneurs, historians, and a wide variety of other people on topics that are outside the area of compliance, but are of great interest to myself and to listeners to the Compliance Podcast Network. This episode begins a five-part series where I look at great structures from antiquity to modern times, consider the form, function, and structure of each, and use that as a lens to explore topics in a best practices compliance program. I hope you'll enjoy this special series on greetings and felicitations. In episode one, Vitruvius, the Brooklyn Bridge, and Compliance. In episode one, I want to consider the work of Vitruvius, the Brooklyn Bridge, and how it all intersects in compliance. Marcus Vitruvius was a Roman author, architect, and civil engineer during the first century BC, known for best known for his work entitled De Architectura. He is famous for proclaiming that a structure must exhibit three qualities, utilitas and venustas, meaning it must be solid, useful, and beautiful. These are sometimes termed the Vitruvian triad, and today these are loosely translated that great constructions and buildings must have form, function, or structure. Form is the arrangement of space and harmony. Function is the measure of usefulness. Structure contains the innovative techniques in its creation. My favorite example of a structure that incorporates all three of these concepts is the Brooklyn Bridge. The beauty of the form follows the function of the scientific principle that underlines the bridge's structure. Each element of the form of the Brooklyn Bridge serves a structural purpose based on mathematical principles, according to Stephen Ressler. First, the form itself is one of great beauty. The function remains the same, even if the modes of transport have evolved. The bridge was designed to carry people from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Once again, Stephen Ressler has said, beyond the aesthetic, these features are a direct reflection of the scientific principles underlying the bridge's design. They are, in a word, structure, a system of load-carrying elements that cause the bridge to stand up. We have a graceful, elegant design which operates to safely conduct people over the Hudson River through an engineering design that allowed the structure to act as intended. The convergence of Vitruvius's tripartite views of what makes a great structure is an appropriate analogy for a best practices compliance program. Over the years, both the Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission, indeed up to 2022, have made clear that a company must have a compliance program that fits its needs. Under the FCPA Resource Guide, it could not have been made clearer when it stated individual companies may have different compliance needs depending on their size and particular risk associated with their businesses, among other factors. When it comes to compliance, there is, one, there is no one-size-fits-all. The resource guide also goes on to state the obvious when it notes companies may consider a variety of factors when making our own determination of what is appropriate for the specific business needs. Indeed, a small and medium-sized enterprise likely will have different compliance programs from large multinational corporations. The FCPA resource guide also goes on to state Compliance programs that employ the the check-the-box approach may be inefficient and, more importantly, ineffective because each compliance program should be tailored to an organization's specific needs, risks, and challenges. The information provided should not be considered as a substitute for a company's own assessment of the corporate compliance program most appropriate for that particular business organization. In the end, if carefully designed and implemented earnestly, and enforced fairly, a company's compliance program, no matter how large or small the organization, will allow the company generally to prevent violations, detect those that do occur, and remediate them promptly and appropriately. Yet when viewed through Vitruvius's prism, it is clear that a compliance program is much more holistic with form, function, and structure. A good compliance program is really about good financial controls, and I think this is one outlook of the 
of FCPA compliance, which is not discussed enough. Stanley Sporkin, the late Stanley Sporkin, in many ways the progenitor of the FCPA, recognized that if a company was going to engage in corruption, it would have to hide activity through falsified books and records. Hence, he articulated the basis for having the accounting provisions included when the act was originally proposed and put into law. These provisions include both books and records and internal controls. The FCPA resource guide said, guide said, the accounting provisions ensure that all public companies account for all of their assets and liabilities accurately and in reasonable detail. So the form of a compliance program should be largely in financial controls that are baked into the company. The formula for, of a compliance program can follow separate forms. It can be based on the hallmarks of an effective compliance program, of the FCPA resource guide, the six principles of an adequate compliance program as are contemplated by the UK Bribery Act, the OECD, 13 good practices, and other formulations, such as the five elements of an effective compliance program developed by Stephen Martin and Paul McNulty. The form of any of these articulations meets the Vitruvius definition. Next is the function. Here I think it is appropriate to consider what the FCPA resource guide says regarding internal controls, which is internal controls over financial reporting on the processes used by companies to provide reasonable assurances regarding the reliability of financial reporting, the preparation of financial statements, They include such various components as control risks that covers the tone set by organizations regarding integrity and risk assessment, control activities that cover policies and procedures designed to ensure that management directives are carried out, information communication and monitoring. Moreover, the design of a company's internal controls must be taken into account when looking at the operational realities and risks attendant to each company's business, the nature of its products and services, how the products and services get to market, i.e. how does it sell its products, the nature of its workforce, the degree of regulation, the extent of government interaction, and the degree to which it operates in countries with a high risk of corruption. This language points to the function of any best practices compliance program, which is indeed to make a company a better run company. Finally, in the area of structure, it is incumbent to recall that any best practices compliance and a corruption compliance program must continue to evolve. It evolves with technological innovations such as transaction or continuous control monitoring. But a compliance program must evolve as your company evolves. Changing commercial realities and conditions create new compliance or increased compliance risks. Your compliance program needs to be able to detect, assess, and manage these new risks as your business creates new products, moves into new territories, or develops new sales channels. They, these are dynamic and evolve as businesses evolve and markets change. A good compliance program should constantly evolve. A company's business change over time, its environments change, the nature of its customers change, obviously the law's governance. So I hope you will consider these factors in design of your compliance program and draw upon Vitruvius as an inspiration. I hope you'll join us tomorrow where we look at structures from ancient Greece and Egypt and written standards. This is Tom Fox again. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode in a five-part series where I'm going to take a look at great buildings and structures from antiquity to modernity and consider them in the context of a best practices compliance program. This series is based upon the teaching company lecture series of the same topic. This special series on greetings and felicitations is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.